that's fake, it's rubbish, it's woo. You can't use that in a fight. Wow, that's so amazing how powerful someone so small can just like destroy a really big person because they have real fajin. These are kind of the kind of extremes people tend to lean towards when they see uh, demonstrations like this. They see a fajin video or they see a fajin demonstration. And so the healthy skeptics or maybe not so healthy skeptics would immediately turn to the how, how, how fake this is, how the um, partner is being very compliant or that is literally just jumping on, on cue or something like that. And it, can, it can't be pressure tested and it's never been pressure tested. And look at all these Kung Fu masters and Tai Chi masters getting beaten up by, uh, you know, amateur fighters and things. So that's, that's one end of the spectrum. And then the other end of the spectrum is people who are complete, like, you know, choir boys. A choir boy! Will think that if you can fudge in that you have like, uh, an, like the magic uh, gauntlet in your hand, you can blast anyone around the ro room. I would say the truth lies somewhere in between. The ability to see somebody and then expel them is an entry level, it's kind of entry level skill in the internal martial arts or the internal Tai Chi world. I'm not saying it's easy to get there. When I say entry level, it doesn't mean that it was an easy path to get there. And I think it's, it is a relatively easy path if you train correctly. It's not unachievable, but that's another topic. But with the right training, you can get there and you can enter the door. It is entering the door. You're opening the door and stepping beyond the threshold. You've now entered the Tai Chi world if you can get your Fa to work correctly. However, just because you can do it, it doesn't mean you can do it on demand. I think it's, it's similar, similar to the parable of um, doing archery. So I do occasional archery, like Ottoman archery. To shoot a target is one thing. To shoot a bullseye is another thing. To be able to shoot a bullseye on multiple, like a consistent grouping of bullseyes or where, wherever you shoot, like in, in tradi traditional archery, you kind of shoot at something and you put your grouping around your first arrow. And then you shoot at something and you put your grouping around the first arrow. This is kind of entry level archery to be able to do that from a very close distance, like literally a, bow's, a bow and arm length away from the target. That's what they get you to do. If that's your first task is to be able to have solid groupings where your arrows are touching uh, wherever you shoot. Does that mean if I can do that in that very controlled and short distance that if a bird of prey is flying past and I'm going to shoot it down, that, that's a whole new skill. Like you're not even close to doing something like that. The target being stationary and close to the shooter is akin to the way that we practice Fajin in the, the training hall. The, our partner, when I'm working with a partner, they're not trying to hide their center, right? They're not a moving target. They're giving me a very solid single body structure. So when I capture them, when I go to seize them, they are easy to seize because they're not trying to hide. When I go too far, they don't try to recoil away. They're not jumping. They're just allowing me to capture them and they're allowing me to throw them out. It is much harder to do this once if, if the person doesn't want to be caught. And so there are, there are tricks involved and more importantly, there's a quality of skill. So if I can become more Sung, if I can become truly Sung and have a really great quality Na, it's very hard to escape me. You will have to put up defenses. You can't be a wet noodle forever because this is a martial art. If I'm striking at you, if I'm coming up, to, coming to hurt you, you have to put things in the way. You have to put resistance in the way. And that resistance is my channel to you, to your center. So, but that, that's a skill thing. That's, that's where they come, becomes the game of skill. So it's much harder to have a very clean and beautiful far against someone who is resisting. But that's besides the point. If you look in wrestling 
or in, in uh, Jiu Jitsu or MMA or whatever it is, to off balance someone is already that's that's a great achievement. You can if you can off balance someone and cause them to stumble you've almost won the fight. Like you're, you're clearly dominating the fight. When you cause someone to stumble, when you cause someone to fall, or even to, to jerk backwards or forwards, these are all huge wins. Guys, thank you for listening this far. If you have any questions, if you, I'd like to hear your comments, your experiences. Uh, how have you found your training in Tai Chi and how you, in terms of ap application, tell me your application stories. I'd like to hear your stories. And please subscribe so I can continue to make more content. We can share more things together. Thank you.